Welcome back to It's a Tool Thing. Today with a little tool haul video and a bit of a Milwaukee rant. So let's get into the tool haul here. Just a few items. Um, I picked up this uh, Armstrong three-quarter with service style wrenches. Pretty good shape. Has some uh, engraving on it, unfortunately. I think they both have some marks of some kind. Um, good condition other than that. Also picked up this inch and an eighth Armstrong. Um, I'm sure I already have one of these in both my sets on the inch and an eighth. Uh, this one here has the markings up here. But I figured I had some loose ones on it. I was pretty sure I didn't have a loose one of these. So I thought maybe I could sell that as a partial set or, or something along those lines. Um, so inch and an eighth there. The, the quarter inch, or excuse me, three quarter inch. I knew I had one. Or I was confident I had one in the shop truck, but I don't think I actually have one in the shop. Um, pretty uncommon size. Thought it might come in handy though with a thinner profile. Kind of be like a shorter tap it wrench. So that's the reason I wanted to pick that one up. And then I picked up this Milton Chuck. Um, decent looking condition. Haven't tested it out yet. Don't have a fitting in it. Um, do believe it works, but uh, I went ahead and picked that up. And those are the three items that I got this uh, this weekend. Didn't pick up much. Didn't do a lot of tool shopping. I went to a couple shops. But I got these all together for $3. Um, the place that I purchased these at, they have some bulk items. And they just mark them with tape. These were all marked with white tape, which is supposed to be $3 a piece. Um, but when I asked the guy, he said 3 bucks was fine, so... I was glad I went ahead and picked this inch and eighth up because I was kind of him hawing about it. But for for a buck a piece, I, I definitely can't go wrong. Uh, Armstrong's a good quality company. So I was glad I picked those three items up. Uh, one tool update while I'm at it here. Um, these snap on, as you can see, there's just the one that I seem to use. I should have just bought the one, I guess. Um, of these uh, Deutsch connectors I was have, had one the other day that was really being a fuss wouldn't come out and it ended up cracking this thing so I'm going to have to see about getting it warrantied but I will say that even the plastic ones that I normally use that completely encase the end down here uh, was not removing that fitting and I finally did get it out with this but in the process it ended up cracking this because it is a fairly thin material on the edges um, that's one negative thing I see about this style over the other style. Let me grab it out here real quick. Is that the, that style doesn't completely enclose it. It doesn't even go more than halfway around where the actual factory tool, which is what I'm grabbing out real quick. Here they are. Um, the extra factory tools that are thin plastic. They certainly don't last long. In fact, one of these two I noticed is damaged already. Um, but they completely encase the end. And uh, I believe the white one is the extractor. Technically the blue one's the remover, but it will work for removing too, in most cases. But uh, I was trying to use this particular one and it was having no luck either. It actually a fitting that I'd replaced in the past or a connector um terminal at some point uh because i had repaired the wires in that vehicle before uh saw all the telltale signs but the wire was damaged in some way so i ended up having to replace it i like to do what i call tip to tail um if at all possible i mean i will fix the wire uh these are speed sensor wires so they're a little bit a little bit harder to fix twisted they're already in a, a plastic sheath so those i really don't like to fix unless i absolutely have to but since I can re replace that entire section or do an overlay, that's what I did in that case. Uh, in fact, the last time it looked like I had the harness completely out of the lower half of the truck uh, because it was integral in the loom, all taped in uh, with wire loom over top. But I ended up running this one external with wire loom over top, just some uh, quarter inch if I remember correctly. So paid a lot of money for these. I'm a little less than impressed. I'm glad that I went ahead and bought Snap-on. 
even though it was a lot of money because I was suspecting that they would crack like this. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen some of the other guys have these and they just don't last. So I'm hoping to get some more use out of them. I've been using them quite a bit, or at least that particular size. I'd like to get some use out of some of the other ones. I do know I use at least a couple of these other ones on a rare occasion. Um, I can't say I've ever seen anyone that big. But uh, I decided to get the whole kit. And then on to the Milwaukee, which is going to kind of be a rant. I actually don't have the item here. But it's uh, it's in reference to that 6.0 battery that I showed on the video here. Oh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago maybe. Um, that was losing connection when I had it in the 90 degree die grinder. Tried to show it on video. Um, I decided let's send that thing in for warranty. Uh, and, and I had such bad experience with the company that I did this. Bolts being left loose. The, uh, the other one's actually out of the truck right at the moment. I was just using it. And uh, it works fine other than the shift button seems to be caught, getting caught. Uh, it seems to be getting a little bit better. But this button, you can actually feel it in the trigger when you go to pull it on on the compact not this one this one they left all the screws loose and it doesn't seem to have any more power than it did before so it's pretty much a waste of time having them work on it and it's the only local place that milwaukee has listed so i decided i'd heard good things about sending stuff in direct to milwaukee so i went to do that process and you know everybody says it's easy and whatnot i did not find it easy um part of the problems are me not necessarily Milwaukee. Um, some of them are them. You know, you got to set up an account, which apparently I'd already set one up at some point. I don't know why. Um, and that was kind of a pain because it, it was locked me out. Um, but I got that resolved. Then you had to fill out all the stuff. Of course, they want to... I could read the serial number still, but they wanted a, an actual copy of the receipt or they asked if I would provide one. And unfortunately, I'm not that organized. Plus, I find it really hard to believe i know this is a a thing with companies you know if you got a five-year warranty or a three-year warranty on something i mean you want to cover it for those years you don't want to cover it outside of that range so i understand that to a point but the way you buy tools i mean you buy them in kits maybe you buy them individually um in that case i believe that was actually a replacement for some of the tools that were stolen so i probably never actually had the actual receipt for that one plus the receipt doesn't have the serial number on it anyways their serial number tags are not uh, are not very durable and tend to get worn off if you actually use the tool. Um, that one was one of the things where you could actually still read it, so obviously hadn't been using it that much. So fortunately, I did have the serial number, but I I sent in the thing and it was could not I just have a cell phone could not get uh, the thing to download to be able to print it, which I actually don't have a printer anyways. But I was hoping I could download it and then send it to somebody else's computer and print it or something but i couldn't get it to do that um so then i i emailed them and said hey you know here's the serial number of this thing if it's not covered under warranty you know if it's outside of the warranty range and i don't have the receipt um to prove that it's inside let's say it's inside it's outside the date but i purchased it within that three or five year period i think it's three years on those batteries um could you tell me, because I don't want to waste my time sh sending it back if it's not going to be covered under warranty. They were saying if they repaired it, it was going to be $105. I don't know if that includes shipping and everything or not, but you can buy that exact battery for $120 according to Home Depot site, though I think they were actually out of them um, at, the, at the moment. So to me, it doesn't make sense to send the battery in if it's not, uh, it's not going to be in warranty anyways. And I get a, I did get an email back, but they basically are saying, hey, just mail, the bat, mail it in and we'll check it out. So then I emailed them back, said, can you not tell from that serial number when it was built? Um, and then, you know, I got another email back and they were basically, well, we need to, it does, even if it's un, in the warranty terms, um, you know, we have to inspect it and decide if it's a warranty thing that can be covered or not. Well that whole thing is well if it's outside of the warranty terms then what do i need to send it into you at this point it's it's been sent in um i don't know if they've received it yet but i end up having to use somebody else's computer to download the uh stuff to print to 
put on the package, the shipping label and such, which they did provide. Um, but then I ran into another problem where it specifically said in there that you had to put the battery label on the exterior of the package and it has to be in color, which oddly enough, their instructions actually don't tell you it has to be in color, but where that actual picture is that you're supposed to tape on the outside, it says it's supposed to be in color. And where I was trying to print that at, um, they didn't have color printing. So I ended up spending way too much time trying to find a place that had a color printer to be able to print this label. Now I understand, once again, that's actually my fault because I don't have a computer and I don't have a color printer and so on and so forth. But once again, this was billed as being easy. Um, so I didn't feel like it was that easy. I actually spent a couple hours. Uh, I went to several places trying to find a place that would, that was able to copy that image into an email. And then um, I was trying to find a place that I could send that email to so that I could get it to uh, get printed in color. Because, you know, they're talking all kinds of fines and stuff, which I don't know if they're actually serious about it. It sounds like more likely it'll just get sent back because they won't accept it. But, um, and I get it, lithium batteries apparently are such a great thing. They're such a bad thing. They're so unsafe, but you use them everywhere. So I was getting pretty frustrated with that. I did find a shipping place that was able to, that did have a color printer. Another place, I, shipping place I went didn't have one. We didn't have those stickers, which I thought the company I worked for would have possibly had different stickers I don't know or prints already to be able to put on packages I don't know how much we would send lithium batteries necessarily but being a shipping shipping department I would thought that might have been something they had but they didn't um I found a place I could email that to uh it wasn't stupid ridiculous I think it cost me a dollar fifty for one for one print but you know cost of doing business I guess um I didn't have a color printer so I guess that's cheaper than buying a color printer got it in the mail uh, at this point, I'm just waiting, and I will update you guys once I once I see the unit come back. So that's uh, where that stands at. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.